Hi, this is Dr. Shur Panini. The topic for today is skin fungal infections, also known as tinea. Fungus can be thought of as yeast or mold. Yeast is just a single cellular organism that reproduces by budding and mole is usually multicellular in morphology and usually found in the shape of a hyphae. Hyphae are just these long filament structures. Fungi can also appear as a combination of both yeast and mold. What you're looking at is a ringworm lesion on the skin, which is a common presentation of tinea infection on the skin, like the body, which is commonly referred to as tinea corporis, referring to the body. These tinea lesions are commonly associated with fungus like Microsporum, Epidermal phyton, Trichophyton. These are the type of fungi that are responsible for ringworm lesions on your body. Usually, fungus uh, spores live in soil, uh, wet surfaces, which can be easily transmitted from one person to another person or pets to humans. Patients often experience intense itching, redness the circular ringworm-like lesions, maybe even associated with hair loss, especially if it's on the scalp, and can be contagious, but only localized to the top surface of the skin. Based on the location of the tinea infection, we came up with terminology that refers to the part of the body uh, where the tinea is located. Tinea capitis refers to fungal lesions on the scalp, which can result in itching, hair loss. Tinea barbi refers to your beard. Tinea chorus refers to jock itch. Tinea pedis is a rash that starts between your toes commonly referred to as athlete's foot. Tinea corporis refers to the body. Most common areas tend to be limbs and the trunk area. Tinea unguum refers to the toenail bed. Tinea fasciae refers to your face. Tinea manuum refers to the palms of your hand. What you're looking at is called tinea versicolor. The name is reflective of the presentation of the fungal infection. Usually it shows up as uh, patches, uh, spots of different colors like white, brown, pink, red. These lesions are due to a fungus called Malassezia farfar. Versicolor is more common in patients who live in humid conditions. Think Florida. Uh, sun exposure, humidity has been shown to cause uh, overgrowth of this fungus. Uh, the fungus actually lives on your body and can coexist uh, without causing a havoc unless the weather conditions change, which results in overgrowth of this fungus, resulting in versicolor infection. Tinea nigra is usually due to a subspecies of yeast uh, called Hortia vernecii, which causes black or brown uh, patches of the soles of your feet. Another common fungus that can be easily contracted through contact with soil while gardening is sporotrix, a fungus which is responsible for a disease called sporotrichosis or rose gardener's disease. Essentially this is prevalent in the environment, especially in the soil, it can be on hay, uh, rose bushes. 
I want to limit our discussion today to just treatment of cutaneous dermatophytosis infections, the ones that we just went over, all of the tinea infections. When you hear the term dermatophyte, um, you're referring to infections related to the fungus that can cause tinea infections. For treatment of certain type of tinea infections like pedis, corpus, crurus, can be managed uh, with topicals uh, like terbinafine, ketoconazole, cotrimazole, myconazole, as long as the disease is considered to be mild to moderate in a small area. If the first line therapy fails or becomes difficult to manage uh, due to disease severity, then oral therapy with either terbinafine, etraconazole, Griseofulvin become useful treatment options. Now there are type of tinea infections like tinea capitis and unguum um, do not respond to topical therapy and will require oral therapy. Just remember, it's easier to catch fungal spores if you're in contact with soil, damp surfaces, uh, like a dirty pool, uh, shower floors, uh, gyms, or in contact with the pet uh, that's been playing outdoors, uh, you're at risk for catching tinea cutaneous infections.